This is Allison Lamons of Allison Studios. For you students that are going to be there this Saturday, I know the class is full, so there's no more signing up, but um, for the those who are uh, going to be there, I just wanted to walk you through a little bit, give you an introduction. Now, I paint vintage neon signs. My husband calls me the neon diva. Whatever. <laughs> Says it on my license plate, so I guess it's true. But anyway, so we're going to be working on a little bit of um, vintage neon sign work in watercolor on paper. Now, I've done a few initials and we'll be working together on doing your very own painting of a vintage neon sign initial. And if you're lucky, we might be able to get through more than one, but I've done a couple here. And so I'm showing the various stages we're gonna try in an hour and a half to get you from start to finish to produce your very own uh, vintage neon sign painting. Now here's a few, partially done, not quite. So I'm showing some various stages. We're gonna be using, um, we're gonna be using actually liquid watercolors that the museum has. So I've actually tested these colors to see what uh, kind of pigments they have. They're really not bad. Um, I was kind of surprised. Uh, feel free if you are a professional working artist and you do have some nice pigments, watercolors, um, the quality of the materials you use always shows up. So while these are remarkably good, they might not be extremely light fast, so in time your artwork may fade. Um, so feel free to bring your own hand ground Daniel Smith fine watercolor pigments if you'd like. I might bring a few to share. I do have some pigments to share. But anyway, um, these are the colors that we're going to be working with. And so I did these paintings, these little prototypes, using the watercolor pigments that we will be using and using the actual brushes that we have available to use. Now I'm gonna bring everything I've got for you folks. Um, not my working materials per se, but I'm gonna bring all the paintbrushes that I can muster up. No, you are not required to bring anything. But if you would like, if you do have some brushes of your own that are a good high quality watercolor brush and you know you'll get good results with them, I recommend bringing at least a one inch size wash, a watercolor wash, because we will be doing large areas in a watercolor wash. We're gonna be going over that. Um, a fan brush, a number uh, four or number six fan brush. I think this one's a number four. It's kind of small. Um, fan brush because sometimes I do some cross hatching to give that loom. Um, if you don't have a, a, a large wa watercolor, you know, a three quarter will probably do. But then we need to get a couple for the fine detail work. We need a couple of rounds. I recommend a number two and a number four round perhaps a number six, not sure. Um, sometimes a flat brush also works, a quarter inch fill, a flat or a quarter inch bright. Uh, bright have the shorter bristles, the, the flats have a little bit longer bristle on them. That would be great. So that's just a few suggestions. We can get by with a few, but when I do a work, I, I use probably 10 to 12 different size brushes. Um, and different techniques. Now, one more thing that you might bring, because we only have an hour and a half, it wouldn't hurt to bring a blow dryer. I'm gonna bring mine, I only have two in the house. <laughs> with three teenage daughters, all with the long hair, it's surprising that we only have two, but we have two, two blow dryers. So you might wanna bring a blow dryer, we can plug it in and get these things moving faster, because we have many stages to these works and parts that we'll need to dry before we can move on. And I just wanna get us through this and make sure that you go home with a finished product and a painting. And you're gonna come, you're gonna to get to know me a little bit and some of my uh, signature painting techniques. And we're gonna have a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to seeing you. Okay, bye. Okay, so here's an edit. Um, also, another thing that you students might be thinking of, um, just at home on your own in the next couple of days, you can just take uh, copy paper, 8.5 by 11 paper, and maybe be working up sketches on your very own initial that we will paint. Um, as you can see in, in some of mine, um, your initials can be straight on, or they can be tilted, they can be block letters, they can be script letters, they, in some instances, can be bulb letters, but this basically, the shape of the letter is a block letter. They can be freehand. 
Um, so you might be thinking about that and you can start working up a couple of sketches on your letter and we'll put it into perspective. We'll show you how to do that when we get there and all. But in the meantime, you can be thinking about what letter you want to paint and um, maybe even come prepared with a sketch or two and we'll take it from there and make sure that we can hit the ground running. All right, very good. See you Saturday. Bye.